this is my Bible. I am. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. benefits of commitment. The benefit of commitment. The Good hand praise. You can do better than that. I'll say give him a good one. Because he's worthy today. Receive glory and honor. Psalm 16, verses 1, 2, and 3. Here begins the reading. Preserve me, O God. For in you I put my trust. O oh my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are in the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom in all my delight is all my delight. When, when, when I was working on the message, the first word is the word that stirred and messed me up. It said, preserve. 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 And this is David speaking here. And, and, and he could talk about a God that knows how to preserve you. He said, preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. Preserve me. It's a personal cry. See, sometimes we do stuff in a group, but sometimes there's some things that's just between you and the Lord that you do this kind of talking to him. And it's not like he's never asked him to preserve him before because I skipped through the Psalms and I found other times where he said the same thing. But, but it just struck me in this passage where he said, Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. So the, the, the word preserve, it's a word that every believer should be glad is found in Scripture because it means 
that I have a chance to make it if God preserves me. Preserve me. Preserve me. How many of you glad you preserved? Some way or another, everybody in this room been preserved from something. You've been kept. <laughs> You've been kept. It, it came to knock you out, but you're still here. It came to dismantle you, discourage you, take your hope away, take your love away, make you lonely, make you depressed, all them things, but you still here. Preserved. And it's not an accident, it's on purpose that he preserved you. Preserved then. Let me let me lay some groundwork. Is is it's 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 an action meaning to maintain, and I put in parenthesis, something in its original or existing state or form. Last word is form. An action meaning to maintain something in its original or existent, existing state or form. Simply put, preserve means to keep. To keep. In the morning time, I like a little preserve on my toast. Not a whole lot because I can't eat a whole lot of it. But I do like a little strawberry preserve. That's my favorite on my toast. Some of y'all not old school. Y'all don't, you know, you, you, you just like jelly. <laughs> Come on, see, I know where I'm at. Welch is great jelly. <laughs> you don't want no stuff with any lumps of stuff in it. In. But I love preserve. Amen. Anybody in the class with me? Y'all kind of. Amen. 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 Just, uh, thank you, Jan. I, I, did. I just needed a witness. Sometimes you need a witness to preserve. You know. And. But. While I was working on this word, this, this, this image came up. But the image came up afterward while I was eating breakfast this morning. And, 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 I, and I got toast and I put the preserves on. I said, okay, God, you're lining up something here. And, and in my head, I just started breaking it down and start processing what preserve means. Well, fresh fruit only lasts so long. And then it starts to decay. And if you don't buy good fruit fresh, it really won't last a long time. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm the kind of person, I like crisp apples and I like grapes that pop. Amen. C come on, I'm, are y'all with me? y'all? How many of you go through the market and you just, just, just sample a grape? You don't steal it, you just... Come on, come on, come on, come on. Holy Spirit still here, still working. <laughs> Even though the package has been definitely closed up, you find a way to get in it. <laughs> no, that's none of y'all in here, but I'm just saying, just in case you watch somebody do it. <laughs> and if they don't pop, you leave them right there. Amen. But fresh fruit has a, long, has a short shelf life. But it's something about the process of preserving something that, that you add with, with, with strawberries in particular. Uh, there's other preservative methods, canned vegetables, et cetera, et cetera. But, but with, with fruit, you put a, 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 a sugar in and you boil it. And you literally change its form 
but it's still strawberry, but it's not the decaying strawberry that it used to be. So what, what happens in the preserving process is God and, 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 and man through learning this procedure stops the decaying process. He stops the corruption. He stopped the breakdown. Now, so something that would only last a, 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 a few months or a few weeks, depending on what type of fruit it is, it, 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 it can last a year or longer. Are, are y'all with me? And so the concept of preserving doesn't mean that you're always going to look the same, but you will always be around. No, I don't look like Lucille at 16. But I'm preserved as Lucille at 65. Are, are y'all there? How many know I'm right about that? You, you real with that? The, the form has kind of changed a little bit, but I'm still here. And for some reason, we beat corruption. Are y'all there? Yeah. Does this make any sense? Yeah. So when I read the word preserve and, and read uh, 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 David's words, it, it messed with me because David is, is saying how the Lord preserves him, not only in his body, but in, in life situations. He's preserved him. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Now, when I, when I skip through scripture, looking at how many times preserved shows up? I couldn't do all of them, so I picked out about five that kind of hit the thing here. I'm not going to, I'm just going to list the scripture and I'm going to read them. You just jot them down, just jot down the numbers, and I'm going to keep, keep it moving. Amen? Amen? Psalm 32 and 7 says, You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Not only does he preserve you, but he causes you to start worshiping and praising with songs of deliverance. He'll keep you, and then he'll put a song in your mouth say, Nah, 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 you didn't get me. I'm delivered. Psalm 40 and 11. The psalmist writes, do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me. So I'm preserved in truth and loving kindness. Psalm 64 and 1. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. See, see. See, because God knows by writing this, giving it to the psalmist, that, that, that in some cases, fear of the enemy is worse than the enemy. Sometimes you might hear a diagnosis, and in fear of it, you start doing bad. That you, you get over it, but you in fear of it, and the fear is doing you in. Somebody holler, preserve me from fear. Am I talking to anybody in the room today? How many of you can admit you are a fraidy cat on, on some things? Yeah, yeah, you're afraid. You hear something and immediately something hits you and you say, and the, the first thing that, and, and you're not worshiping God. You just say, oh, God. <laughs> Psalm 121, 7 and 8. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forward and even forevermore. He's able to keep you forever. You're going out and you're coming in. Is this good to anybody but me? Then Jeremiah 49 and 11 says, 
leave your fatherless children, even when they've been left, he said, I will preserve them alive. And let your widows trust in me. God said, I won't preserve you dead. I'll preserve you alive. Let's, let's unpack this, this, this Psalms 16, 1, 2, and 3. Let's go back up to the Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. It seems that David wrote this psalm from a time of trouble because he asked for preservation. Then the eighth verse down, just jot it down. It says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Not only am I preserved, I won't be moved. You'll preserve me and keep me. You won't even let them knock me off my post. Ooh. Why y'all keep getting off of it if he'll keep you on your post? Oh, God. David took confidence in the fact that he would not be moved. The tone of this psalm is not despair or complaint it is settled joy somebody say settled joy well despite his trouble David has a praising confidence in his God David found the secret of contentment and great gladness to have settled joy is to be set in a place in the Lord. I'm settled in my place in the Lord. And where I'm settled is a place of joy. I've got settled joy. And you can have settled joy while all hell is burst, bursting loose around you. I'm just laying back in God. See, I'm not just singing, I will trust in the Lord. I'm leaning on him while I'm trusting in him. Come on, come on, come on. It ain't something I'm just singing for show in front of everybody and rocking and reeling. But I, 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 when, it, when it gets tight, I just get into a settled place. When I think of settled, it's like my old TV. Before we got the little small ones that you could just pick up with one hand and carry, and they can be 400 square feet wide. You know, they're still small. But we had one that was, we had a big screen because it was state of the art to have a big screen at that time. But, at, but, but the back of it was this wide. Yeah. Yeah. And the rascal weighed almost 400 pounds. So, so, so when we put it on the stand, at the holiday time, we would want to move it and I'd have to call for help. Tim Davis, get here now. You know why we couldn't move it? Because the longer it sat there, the more settled it got. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't want you to get stuck like that. But, but with God, I want you to get settled yeah. till you're unmovable. Yeah. And it takes a lot of work to push you off. See, some of y'all, it don't take much to push you over. Every little thing come along, knock you off your perch. You can't handle nothing. Everything is not a 10 in your life. Some things is just a 2. You just ought to get so settled in till when they push you, you got that, that old TV wouldn't move. It would just, it would act like it's gonna move. And we'd have to huff and puff. You ought to be that way. Settled in to uh, God, I know you gonna you gonna work it. I'm just gonna settle in. Anybody need to hear that word? You need to have settled joy today. 
settled Joel. It, 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 it settled in. And, and so despite his trouble, he, he, he got sick. David set himself in God. In other words, he rested in the Lord. He just, just rested. God, I'm going to rest in you. I'm going to let you handle it. You know, sometimes we want to rest in the opinion of others about what we need to do, but you just need to go to God himself, all by himself, and, and not another person. Because sometimes when you do that, you invite their unsettledness into your life. And you don't need they unsettled when you already tore up. How many know I'm right about it? How many ever called somebody and you felt worse and you looked at the phone and said, why did I do that? And you might have said another word in between. Why in the, why did I? Because now you feel worse than you did before you made the call. When God is saying, I'm available right here, just settle in to me. Call me. Talk to me. I'll talk back. I got an answer for you. Anybody out there? Then, 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 uh, 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 uh. The next takeaway of this passage is this. The plea from David asking God, you don't see it written there, but it says, preserve me from the world. Let me not be carried away with its excitement. Serve me from the world. Yeah. Oh, shiny. Everything takes you up. Oh, oh, shiny. We're in a church culture where, where everything that shines, we, 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 we're running to. Oh, shiny. The next one. Preserve me from the devil. Let him not tempt me above what I am able to bear. See, I know the scripture says he'll do that, but, but sometimes you need to put an ask there. Preserve me. Then preserve me from, ooh, here comes a big one, myself. Some of y'all need preserving from yourself. Because yourself is not good for yourself. Because if if the only person you consult is yourself, because you have a good mind, at the end of the day, all you have is your. And you know what? If myself was okay, I would need another self to come and save me. That's why I tell people that tell me, I'm going to get myself together and then I'm going to come to church. I don't expect to see him no more. Because I'm standing here because I got help with self. Because I couldn't get myself together. Because every time I turned, I met myself coming, and I met myself going, and I needed to see somebody else coming and going. I needed to connect with the Lord. I needed somebody that was greater than me. And sometimes you can be a legend in your own mind. I'm all of that in two snaps and a bag of chips, but you ain't all of that. You a wreck going somewhere to happen. You're one step away from destruction. You're an accident away from hell. And you keep trying to fix yourself. Well, if you fix this, something else may be broken. Then you have to turn around and fix that. So you are a walking fixer-upper, you know. <laughs> keep fixing yourself because you think you all of that, that you can work on yourself because you got the master plan. But you don't have it. You unsettled. But you need to have settled joy. How many of you know when, when God asks for, say, lay all your cares on me because I care for you, he's trying to say, I'm the ultimate fixer. Lay it on me. Let me handle it. How many have cried and, and cried and got up from crying and cried some more and it was still with you? The best thing you can do when you're going through a good cry 
is going to sleep. This is too practical. You thought I was going to say, call somebody, do something, <laughs> read something. No, you need rest. You, you walk, out, just, just take a nap. And, and you know why you're doing that? Your soul gets a chance to seek help for you. Because yeah. in your nighttime, that's when your soul starts resourcing your brain. And really, for the Christian, that's when you start resourcing the library of God's head. Yeah. Finding an answer. This scripture is exactly what David was doing. Wow. He was searching his soul. Yeah. He was searching it. Yeah. Are, are y'all out there? Yeah. And, and not only do, do, do I need to be preserved from, 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 from me, from selfishness, from high-mindedness. Preserve me from, from those evils into which I see others operate. Because we see others and we say, oh, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> we act like we don't, we're not entertained by it. Yes. Preserve me from those evils into which I am apt to run to. Ooh. Oh, I didn't get even a groan out of it. There's some stuff you want to do. Let me be clear. Sin is fun. It's fun. But it's only for a season. I hate artificial sweeteners. You know why? But when you first taste them, they taste all right. Everyone, I don't care any of the names. I'm not going to call because somebody will call and try to, you know, get some legal people. <laughs> Pink pack, blue pack, green pack, yellow pack. See, so many knockoffs all day, y'all pick one that you think I'm talking about. But they all start out pretty good. So, so I got to confess, some of them don't even start out good. And they taste sweet at first, but Lord, after a while, your taste buds start ministering to you. Fake. Fake. Aftertaste. Because nothing tastes like sugar. Are, are y'all there? Okay, there's nothing wrong. Then the scripture says, you are my Lord. Wow. This is David talking years and years before Jesus show up. But you hear David talking to Jesus. And Jesus is Lord. When he said Lord, every time the word Lord you, it was directed to Jesus. Then he said, oh God, but then he said, oh Lord. And so, so, so he even talked to Jesus before he, he showed up. And, and then, then this is, is, is what he says to the Lord. Oh my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. See, in your soul, you need to have some soul talk. You need some soul talk. And David here in this scripture was having soul talk. And in his soul talk, he told Jesus, I'm not confused about who you are. You are my Lord. And when you get into soul talk, you'll start confessing to God the things you know about God. When do you do 
true soul talk. When you're in the midst of trouble and you're all by yourself, you start. Some people say you're talking to yourself. I encourage you to do some soul talk because you're not talking to yourself. You, it, it's your soul talking to him. Yeah. Do some soul talk. How many had times where you got into a place and you just just mouthed it? You just you just said it. You you God, you said this. You 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 promised me this. You you need to have uh, some soul talk. It is a good thing to speak to your soul. It's your soul. Speak to it. Have it speak to the Lord. And here are some examples of some soul talk from the Psalms. It said, "Let God arise and His enemies." Be scattered. That's soul talk. Be my strong refuge. Soul talk. God, do not be far from me. Come quickly to help me. Oh, that's soul talk. And then you, you get crazy and you look at the beauty of the Lord. You say, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies. I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole being, body and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. That's soul talk. See, before you ever get happy on the outside, you got to get happy on the inside. Have some soul talk. Then, a la then another one says, I listen carefully to what God, the Lord, is saying, for he speaks peace to his faithful people, but let them not return to their foolish ways. If you're doing good soul talk, it'll keep you from being foolish. David went on to say, my goodness is nothing apart from you. See, because sometimes we think our goodness is all of that, but, but I'm not good apart from you. Jesus said, Jesus had to cast his own righteousness onto the Father. He said, there's none right but the Father. There's none good but the Father. He said, don't call me good. Call the Father good. I'm only good because he's good. And because I have him, I'm good. But of myself dwelleth no good thing. See, see you have to realize I'm not so good, but who I got is good. I'm not so right, but he is righteousness. So I walk in his righteousness. I live in his goodness. I'm good because he made me that way. Because of who's on the inside of me. So you have to know where it is. How many of you know you're good because he made you good? How many of you know you're really not right? But he made you righteous. Isn't that awesome how God can make us righteous? Yeah. How do you do that? Because you invited me in. Yeah. And when I come in, I bring more of me and, and, and push out you. Yeah. Somebody else say, hey, amen. I'm glad about that. Because yeah. you needed to get out of the way. Yeah. And how many of you know if you, you get out of the way, maybe God could really do something with you? Yeah. But you got to trust him. You can't invite him into the foyer, but not invite him into the sanctuary. And some of you open the door and let him in, but you can only go so far. Have you ever gone to somebody's house and they say, come on in, and they stand right at the door with you in the front door? Well, what, what, what you want, baby? <laughs> You scared they're going to check the bedroom and see all the clothes? You scared they're going to go in the kitchen and open the oven where you just put all the dishes inside? Uh, what, what are you hiding? Is it some dust you don't want them to see? That's how we do the Lord, but he already sees it. He already knows his thing. He tells you, come on, follow me. Let's, let's find yeah, it. Yeah. Let's find it together. Yeah. Let, let's find all that stuff you had. Let's, <laughs> let's find it. Is that it? There it is. I just want you to know there's nothing hidden from me. Here it is. 
Yeah, yeah. And and if we look under this one, I'll find some more of you there. There it is. Is that what you're trying to hide? Me? Just invite me on in. Let's do a good search. Let's run a search engine on you. Come on, let's just let, let's just go through the stuff. Let's just check it out. Be, because, because I don't want to just come in your front door and stand at your steps. I want to come all the way in because it's me coming into you that makes the difference for you. How many of you know inviting them in has made a difference? Amen. And I'm not going to ask you to respond to this. How many of you hold back some? Oh. Oh. And I bet not ever hear you say to me, I got to get it together. David knew that at his best, he was nothing apart from God. It was nothing when it comes to making David righteous before God. He needed God to bring his righteousness to him. It was nothing because David's goodness was itself a gift of God. Therefore, apart from him, it was nothing. It was nothing because David's goodness, as precious as it was, was of small value without his relationship with God. See, God makes you good. He makes you right so you can have relationship with him. That's why it's necessary. As far as the saints, in that third verse, he said, as far as the saints who are on the earth, David proclaimed regarding the people on the earth, the saints on the earth. He said, he said, it's good for me to hang out with saints. As messy as they can be. As awful as they can be. They make me so sick I could just knock them out. They won't do nothing. I, they won't help as much as they could. They won't do this. They won't do that. David said, I still love hanging out with the saints. Because it's better to be with them than anybody else. Ooh. See, that's a different mindset. I was going to ask you, but I'm not going to ask you. How many of you ever got tired of somebody else in this room? <laughs> oh, come on, come on. I'm looking at you. We're going to get real. No, 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 no. I'm not playing with you. We're going to search this thing out today. Here it is. Here it is. Don't you lie in the house of God. Here it is. Come on, 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 come on. Come on. And, the only, and the only image of a person shouldn't be this one up here. Come on, come on, come on. They done got on your nerve. If she say it one more time. Don't ask me nothing one more time. Come on, don't, don't run up on me one more time in church. Oh, it's getting dicey now. Oh, you, you got to preach it like it's for real. Hey, I'm in a real church on the, on, 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 on the, on the near west side of Detroit. <laughs> oh, that shook the house right quick then. I'm bold enough to ask it. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you told me to ask it and I asked it. <laughs> But David said, in spite of that, I'd rather be with you. I'd rather be with you. Because it's a blessing to be among you. Because I know at any given time, we're going to stop and we're going to pray. Because we got a common enemy. Now, I mess with Dora, but I know she's going to pray for me. I mess with a bunch of y'all, but you're going to pray for me. Yeah. Come on, come on. I believe that in my heart that you want God to do his level everything great for me. Yeah. Even when I preach something you don't want to hear, you say, just bless Lucille today, brother, right? But you, 
but you're going to pray for me. Because it's better that we're together. Because there's something about me that no matter what, I keep coming back every Sunday. Amen. <laughs> and I'm not delirious. I'm happy to be with you. Yeah. Bless the name of Jesus. Because I know when the saints get together, something's going to take off. and yeah. Something's going to be there. I don't hate being with you. You can't make, the devil can't make me hate you that much that I don't want it. I enjoy the fellowship of the saints because I believe in the fellowship miracles can happen. I believe deliverance can happen. And it can happen from some messed up folk. He knew I was a mess when he called me to preach. He knew Peter was one. He knew Paul was one. He knew, he knew David was one. But David still say, I'm blessed to be with you. Because it's something about being with the saints that we preserve each other. We keep each other from decaying. Come here, Jay. You're going through. <laughs> but you ain't going to go through by yourself. <laughs> You're going to be all right. <laughs> uh, you, you know what? You, no, 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 no. <laughs> You're going to be all right. <laughs> I, I, I know some days you'd rather knock my head off, but, <laughs> but not today. <laughs> this ain't that day. For the day we're going to hug and we're going to believe God. Yes. Because we, we, we believe in the word that says when two come together, we can get stuff to move. Yeah. <laughs> We can get it to move it. <laughs> come here, come here. And don't dare add some more to the, to the equation. <laughs> we can get something moving. Yeah. And I dare somebody else to run up here and join in with yeah. us. And yeah. We can get some stuff moving yeah. Yeah. in the midst of the saints. You know what they did? They preserved me. I'm here. Because the church has power yes. to stop decay. Yes. <laughs> it stops the corruption. Yes. <laughs> you shall not die, yes. but live yes. and declare the works of the Lord. Yes. Many are the afflictions yes. <laughs> of the righteous. Yes. But the Lord heals them, delivers them out of every one of them. How y'all out here? I need you. I need you. I need you. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say, I need you. I need you because we in this journey together and when we start acting like that we'll get stuff moving and the, the enemy can't come in among us and nobody can kill us because somebody been praying for us You were preserved. And just this last scripture, I'm going to give it to you. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And it says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be, what's the next word? Preserved. Say it again. Preserved. How? Blameless. At the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to preserve you blameless. 
he's going to bring them. Because they, they say it this earlier. You are the source of life. And I can't be left behind. No one else will do because I will take hold of you. Because I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else can I go? There's no other name where which I am saved. Capture me with grace. I will follow you. Yes. My heart is yours for life. Yes. I need your hand in mine. Yes. No one else will do. I put my trust in you. I will follow you because this world has nothing. 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 has nothing for me. Because I need you. soul talk. I need you Jesus to come to my rescue. Where else can I go? back up to this song. Everybody, take somebody by the hand. talk to you, but that we need each other. Other soul talkers. <laughs> other people with settled peace. Teach us how to rest in you. Not in each other. Only, but rest in you. For everything that we need. God, we love you today and we magnify you today and we praise you today for what you you just delivered to us today. Thank you that you're the keeper of our souls today. And what will stop us and block us, you allow us to keep moving. Thank you, God. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give them a good praise in the house. Yeah.